Paul Anthony Fava was born on Lincoln's birthday, February 12th, 1939, at Lincoln Hospital in the Bronx, a borough of New York City. In a previous video, we told the poignant story of Paul's parents. Paul's mother, Therese, left Montreal, Canada as a young orphan. His father, Antonio Fava, went to work at the age of nine when his father died unexpectedly. In 1945, Paul and his family moved to an apartment at 2126 Continental Avenue near Pelham Bay Park, and he graduated from Christopher Columbus High School in June 1956 with a fine academic record and one of the most impressive pompadours in the senior class. In October, he enlisted in the United States Army. This photo was taken in Pelham Bay Park the day he left for basic training in Fort Benning, Georgia. In October 1957, he was sent to Pioneer Kasern near Hanau, Germany. While serving there, he became friends with some of the other men in his unit. One of his buddies introduced him to a young lady from Klein Auheim, a small town near their base. I had met Marianne through a friend of mine who was dating one of her girlfriends. We went out one night and he says, come with me. There's another girl coming, you may want to meet her. So I went out with him and I met her. We got very friendly. We enjoyed each other. She spoke fairly good English. After they started dating, however, Paul learned something about Marianne that he had not expected. I dated her for a couple of weeks, and then she says, you know, I have to go back. I says, where are you going back to? She says, I'm in a convent studying to be a nun. I says, what? And we hadn't even kissed. We just had fun together. She had a, a good personality. Their love deepened with time, and a marriage proposal was made under circumstances unlike any other in our family. About a week or two went by and said, geez, I miss her so much. I said, I gotta make an effort to go over and see her. Here I am in combat uniform with a metal helmet on. I got a machine gun mounted on the top of the Jeep and I got a 45 on my side and I drive up into the convent through the gate and the mother superior comes out and I said, I'm coming to see Marianne. Mariana? Varum, I said, I want to talk to you. Is this okay? He says, yes. She called Marianne and she came out. And Marianne asked me, she says, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I said, I miss you. I said, do you, do you really want to be a nun? I'm not sure. I said, let me stop you from being a nun. Will you marry me? Marianne answered in the affirmative and left the convent with Mother Superior's blessing. In 1959, Paul and Marianne were married three times, first by a Catholic priest, then by a German major, and finally by a military official. Marianne arrived at Idlewild Airport in August 1959. Paul returned home by ship in October and began looking for civilian employment as a carpenter. When nothing turned up, he applied for a position at MetLife on 23rd Street. The guy that interviewed me, nice man, happened to be a World War II veteran. He told me they had an opening for a temporary position as an elevator operator, $65 a week. I took the job. It just blossomed from there. I met one of the vice presidents in the elevator. He found a position for me in the engineering department, which was an another nice raise in increment, probably close to $100 a week. In 1960, 
Marianne gave birth to her first child, Susan. I remember going over with my parents to see the baby and to meet Paul's young bride. Paul and Marianne were the first newlyweds I had ever known, and she seemed comfortable with us from our very first meeting. I was curious about what her life and family were like when she was a child. Many years later, I learned that Marianne was born on February 3, 1940, in Klein-Auheim, near Hanau, to Rudolf Jacobi and the former Anna Franz. She went to school in her hometown and had five older sisters, Rosemary, Anita, Paula, Gretel, and Lynchen. There were also three brothers, Heinz, the oldest, who was the first communion sponsor of young Dieter, the son of his sister Anita, Otmar, and Rudolf, the youngest, who was also known as der Lausbub, the rascal. Perhaps growing up in a large family explains why Marianne was so completely at ease with other people later in life. In 1964, Paul and Marianne welcomed their second child, Paul Lewis Fava. Lisa, their third child, was born in 1970, and Paul continued to work his way up the ladder at MetLife. I worked in the engineering department for a while, doing the actual work on all the compressors, air conditioning, heating units, ventilation units, and stuff like that. And I went into the planning department, and I started off as a junior analyst, and we used to analyze space, make the new offices. There was 22,000 employees in the home office at the time. I worked my way up the staff and eventually became manager of the whole department. When I left, I had the staff of 72 people under me. In 1981, Paul ended his tenure at MetLife and began a new career as a business entrepreneur with Marianne. They opened up a health food store in Mount Vernon, which became very popular and very successful. In 1985, however, tragedy struck the family again. On the day before he was scheduled to begin his service in the United States Navy, Paul Lewis Fava was killed when a police officer's gun accidentally discharged at point-blank range. I heard the awful news from WCBS on our clock radio shortly after Sunday dinner. I soon learned that the victim was the young cousin who had been a student in my English class and a member of our football team when I taught at Mount St. Michael Academy. The sorrow of his parents and sisters and the rest of our family was almost unbearable. Paulie was particularly fond of animals. He maintained a miniature zoo in his home, and this photo of him holding his beloved dog is my personal favorite. I sometimes think that Paul could have been an extraordinary veterinarian. When I saw the painting that was commissioned after his death, I realized that the inclusion of an image of Pegasus was a stroke of artistic brilliance and psychological insight. My cousin Paulie loved animals, and like Perseus, he yearned to explore the world. In 1994, Paul and Marianne opened up a second store 
in Carmel, New York, which they maintained until 2007. After selling the store, Paul took a position as director of buildings operations with the town of Patterson and stayed with them for around 12 years. In 2009, he and Marianne celebrated their golden anniversary in Carmel by recreating the marriage ceremony which took place in Germany 50 years earlier. Paul's best man, Art Scheffer, and his wife Nancy came from Indiana, and Marianne's brother, Rolf Jacobi, and his wife Erica flew in from Germany. I spoke to Father Lutz and I explained the situation we're married in Germany. So he did the whole ceremony in German. All my children were there and my grandchildren. Then there was a party with drinks on the house and plenty of food and everything else. Marianne Fava passed away on May 3rd, 2019. She was always a great encourager to me, especially in difficult times, and I wanted to tell her story in order to encourage you. Requiescat in pace.